um, part of it is the visual pictorial history uh, of African peoples and how visual symbols are language. Um, I did not bring it with me because it is 20 feet long at least. Uh, but one example would be Kuba Cloth. Now, I do have a book on Kuba Cloth. And there are lots of, um, actually, geometric, but there are a lot of. <coughs> I was just thinking about Symbolic links, with uh, stitching, stitching, uh, and symbols and circles. And as I say, I have a piece coming in my middle world. And I don't really count how many blocks are in it, but it's at least 20 feet long and about this long of the blocks are yay big. So it's a lot of blocks. And they all have these interesting geometric figures. None of them are the same. And I know it means something. I don't know what it means. I've spent an inordinate amount of time, first of all, trying to find duplicates, which I can't find, and then trying to figure out this is some kind of language. Okay? So, Kuba cloth, which is from Central Africa, is a, a tradition of stitching in a textile. This textile is made from Africa, which is probably Strip down to make thread, weld them together, and then um, applicate or piece together. Um, they're afraid to talk about the Celtic cloth. The Celtic cloth is my straight line woven cloth. But a lot of you probably have seen something, you don't have no idea what you're looking at. It's often yellow, red, orange, those colors. Perhaps this is not the This is what I got. This is what I got in my answer. So this is not the typical one. It's not the one. These are different symbols. A different symbols. Okay. And uh, these are from Bach. And they all have a specific meaning. Okay. And yes, yes. I got larger the cloth, both the Kenta cloth and the Kuba cloth, the more prestigious the person was. Yes, this, this is consistent with the African tradition. 
and it is consistent with the quoting tradition. The quote, because quotes tell stories. Quotes have always been not only a creative uh, way of expression for women, but also they are but also they can be a political expression for women. Um, for example, of course, this is after the underground railroad, uh, to this quote to the end. So for that quote to you can find all kinds of political quotes that, that you, have, you don't have the quotes of pictures of it. And even now, Quilts continue to do that. With 9 11, there was a call for quilts uh, to remember that. The 9 11 was in September, and I went to the quilt market in October. There were hundreds of these quilts. So that's very consistent with uh, the tradition of quilt making. <coughs> So they built a strong case for this makes perfectly good sense. Now normally, I think this talk to people, and this is the point where I start to question. Now what do you think? Just because it's plausible, just because it sounds so touching, I mean, how can you not know the story? Uh, particularly, as a black quilt, I might not know the story because so much about evolution movement is the white opposition is from the north. There's not much from the point of view of the story, but there's not much that contributes to our understanding of how people took it upon themselves to escape slavery. It's always presented as someone benevolent, they helping people. Which, I mean, when you think about it, you're going to leave home. You don't know exactly where you're going. You don't know how long it's going to take. And you're pretty darn sure somebody's on your tail. I mean, immediately. In fact, you know, the, the phrase underground railroad, I've heard two different stories which kind of have the same point, is that the slave was being pursued and they were they, shot behind it. And then all of a sudden, they were saying, and when the guy got there, he said, it was like, it was like he disappeared on some kind of underground railroad. You know, it's like he was there and he wasn't there. So, um, it's a very appealing story. Um, and as I say, at this point, it's when I start to question it. But I'm here talking to a history group. Okay. And before I say more about my own personal thoughts on this and about additional research that's been done since 1994. I'm going to pause for a moment to invite any comments or questions from you. Because this is a history book. Which makes the world of will not possible. Yes, but I'm very active in winter. I haven't really found a good time to know about the papers that we have done in terms of facilitating all of that. Yes. Yes. Well, the 
because quotes take the fact that it's left over. And lots of quotes were made for the plantation, not these quotes necessarily, and it would be fabric left from there. And the authors open that bookshelf, I spent a lot of time talking to men, attorneys, accountants, banks, bankers, and their perception of quotes is they're cutting up old clothes and making quotes, which is kind of funny. Uh, but not far uh, off from historical, historically done quotes of that. Because, as you can see, this, this is a scrap quilt. It could even be scrap leather. So, you don't need much of uh, any fabric to make it a quilt look. Well, the signs would be before you left the signal. Yes, you're correct, because if you have all of these ahead of time, you know, what happens at the next stop? And, and the next stop is not going to be a plantation where there's somebody with a quilt out. So now there were signals along the way. The recipe was given before you started. Okay. And in fact, that's got 
the family history. You know, the one person you call is is Jimmy Buffett. And then there are people who can't remember that that's cousin uh, Angela's first husband's that they can get this from and don't hear it. So, but there has been no collaboration by anybody. I think his sister had heard some of the stories, but the family in general was not able to explain them. So, Yes. Uh-huh. I think it wouldn't necessarily be a house at all. You're going to follow the bills. So, this is the cross didn't appear out of the wall. They would appear as a signal. Okay, it's time to get your stuff together. Okay. Well, if you read about the underground railroad, there was organization. There's a lot of talk about and a lot of actual documentation of lanterns being used. Um, and so you would go a certain way and there would be a ladder and you could go to the next location. But I think it wasn't somebody's house. Is for whoever is ready to go. Well, not, I mean, not everybody would be ready. It takes courage. I mean, I would think that there may be some advantages to go one at a time. Sometimes it might be that they need to go six at a time because they're going to go up to six different people are uh, potentially going in different directions. Well, as I said, usually when I'm talking to a collective girl, I begin to dispel this. Cultures as a rule generally don't want me to go all of this. And in fact, I have been shut down on all of this. And, and, and comments such as, well, just because you can't prove it doesn't mean it's true. Okay? But this is a historical society. We know that. You need to document it. There are so many funny things in this. Uh, for example, when she talks about in the first little thing that you have a double way to get married with a double way to The double way to get came decades later. later. The friends I'm living with double way rings, they're jump in the world. So there, there are many kind of factors. And as a quilter, it's like, okay, so who's going to make all these quilts? And and have them ready in time for what you need to do. Because um, I will say, I quilt here, made our cherry quilt for you. Weeks. Because it was a group of them. Now, yes, they use some machines. But if you have a lot of people making a quilt, you can get it done. And a lot of these quilts will tie. Okay. As I say, this, this is a quilt top. It, and this is a quilt top. A quilt, for something to be a quilt, it's got to have three layers. It's got the pretty top, which is two star applique or some high stitch. There's batting in the middle, and then there's a backing. And then there are running stitches that hold it together, and that's what makes it the quilt. But a lot of these quilts were also were tied, they weren't quilted. Which means you could tie them in a couple of weeks with tie quilting that happened in. Um, and in fact, there's a, a big section in how this book about the knots and where they how knots would be. And I guess that would be if a person had their own sample quilt and they put knots in a certain place. 
place that obstructs him from the world of the folks of the community to indicate distance and direction. I didn't discuss that because that whole thing was just more than I could do in my head. Yes. When this book first came out, there was nothing like it to compete with this. Raymond uh, was a woman in New York, and he was on um, Oprah, and he was everywhere. Uh, and on the Burns, if any of you all know, the book in a day technique. And on the Burns, we had a book about it, there were posters about it. School teachers were coming in wanting to buy the poster. We had lesson plans to help you. Teach this to kids. This was a really, really big deal. A really big deal. And it made everybody feel good. Well, I like everybody to feel good. Um, so I, I only sort of have a problem with that. And when I say sort of, it's like, but you really shouldn't feel good about slavery. You know, you, you, that's not something I can do if you feel bad about it. Yeah, feel bad about it. That's appropriate. Yes. Well, the other thing, too, as a history, and I'm not a historian, I'm a cult historian, and, and as I said, when I first read this, I was enchanted by this. And I could find nothing to dispute it. And it was believable. Okay. But there has been a lot written since to dispute it. For example, Charleston was often a place that people were too not from slaves because they had free slaves there. And if you could get there and blend in, you could. Perhaps we say. Now, how do we know this? We know this because we have found lots of posters from Charleston area looking for fugitive slaves because they thought that they had come to Charleston. Also, and I'm not a student of the Underground Railroad, I'm guilty, okay? But the more, most usual path for folks from Charleston was not to go west and then north. It was to go east, because it already there and north. Okay? So it wasn't even the path that they took. Okay? And how many fugitive slaves, and it, this is still my part of the story, to Charleston. Okay? So how many fugitive slaves were using this method? Well, we don't know that. I don't know how many slaves escaped by the end of the railroad. I think we probably exaggerate how many of them were because we want to believe that. We want to feel good about, you know, efforts to make this horrendous institution go away. If we can't make it go away, let's get the people out of it. So, um, there are just so many historically inaccurate things to it, like the double layer, which that plot did not exist. Um, and, and 
even the thought of a double wedding, a marriage with a double wedding ring, makes no sense. So I don't know, I don't think Jacqueline told him all of us. I think Ozella presented this not as a statement of fact, but as a story she had heard. I mean, it puts a good face on things. Um, and, and, and there's no other collaboration that this is true. No. And they are, if you don't Google it, you find lots and lots of not writers and Thank you. 